Mark Brown and this is a new Super Home video covering the use of a wood burning stove in our lounge here at Super Home 59. In this video we'll be looking at the pros and cons of using a wood burning stove in a house in Great Britain and we'll be looking at how to clean it and operate it in day to day use during the winter months. So here's the Dovra 250. This is it the morning after the night before when we've actually had a fire going. It's filthy as you can see. I'm going to show you how to clean it out. So I'm going to take this uh, scraper implement here and I'm going to run it over the grate and push the ash backwards and forwards a little bit until it falls to the grate. Now I don't want to remove the large chunks of charcoal. We'll retain those. It's always better to light the fire on a bed of charcoal than it is without. And this comes out here in the dustpan. And I'll just clean up this area here. And there you go. Pull it out. A tap. And there's the dustpan itself. Now we're going to go and empty that into a food recycling retainer that's plastic. Of course, if this is hot, you do not empty it into any form of plastic container. An important thing to realise about the ash is it's very lightweight, it's very dusty. If you walk quickly through the house, you'll be surrounded in a cloud of dust. So walk slowly. And this is the box that I'm going to use to stick the ash in. It's a recycling box it's designed for food waste. You can put the ash directly onto your garden or actually into your waste bin if required, if you don't have a garden, or directly into your compost heap. In my case, stick it straight in here if it's cold, and of course it is. Okay, having emptied the ash safely and without getting any dust in the house, I'm now going to get some kindling. I store that over there on the biomass boiler to keep it warm and dry. Let's have a look. So here we are in the garage at the biomass boiler. It's currently on, which is the noise you can hear at the moment. Um, so it's nice and warm, and that warm air is percolating up above the boiler into this area above it. And here's my kindling supply that I'm going to use to light the fire. Now, during the rest of the year, this is stored in plastic bags outside. Here they are. Okay. Come winter time, I bring those bags inside and I scatter the kindling out on this homemade DIY platform on top of the boiler. And that's purpose is only to keep the kindling nice and dry. Okay, that's the kindling sorted out. How do we light a log burning stove? With this, lots of paper. Newspapers are best. The Daily Mail burns really well. Um, photocopying paper, uh, junk mail, envelopes burn really well. Now this is an envelope, cheap piece of paper, cheaper the better. Screw it up and shove it in there. And keep doing it, okay? Till the seats, shove it in there. You don't need to do anything fancy with the paper. Literally screw it up into a ball. What you really need to start a fire with paper is volume. You'll be surprised at how difficult it is light a fire with shredded newspaper. The reason being is it's quite compact with little air gaps which is why it's important to screw the paper up to get the volume so the air can flow up through it. So there we have the paper, let's add the kindling. Nothing complicated about this. Okay now nice and clean. So, next question. What about that empty log basket? Well, we have two of these. Here's one that's full. Move that one over here. Now the trick to this is, is to make sure your logs are lovely and dry. I can't stack those all above the biomass boiler, the kindling. So the secret to this is, is that they're stored outside, but we have a two basket system. One basket we're burning, and the other is just sitting by the fire for the evening, okay? So being next to the fire, it gets nice and hot and nice and dry. So the next day, this is the basket we were burning, and this one will go outside to fill. 
Okay, I'll show you that next. Go to the Yellow Pages, go online, try and find a reputable um, dealer in logs. You buy it by the cubic meter, you don't buy it by weight, and you don't buy it by log, okay? Logs absorb water, so if you're buying by the weight, damp logs are useless because they're very heavy. You can't burn a damp log. You do need your logs to be seasoned, as in dried out, for about a year or two. But do ensure you strike up a relationship with um, the dealer of logs like um, a tree surgeon or a local farmer who is happy to deliver to you and then you can stack them outside your house. When you do stack them outside your house, try and find a south facing wall where the sunshine gets in and dries them through the summer months. Right, let's go light the fire. Before we light the fire, one word about keeping the glass clean. You can buy a proprietary cleaner like this, Stovax, stove glass cleaner. It's pretty evil stuff. Uh, you wipe it on a rag, let it dissolve the tar that's built up, and then wipe it off. It ain't nice stuff. You have to use rubber gloves to apply it, and to be honest, it's horrible. Now, if you have a well-designed stove, it will allow air to flow just behind the glass inside here. If there's an airflow and plenty of heat, any build-up of um, smoky, dusty deposits, or indeed tar or creosote, will actually dissolve, evaporate, and go up the chimney. So you should be left with a clean piece of glass. So I have here something that looks a bit smoky. I'm gonna use something much more simpler than the Stovax glass cleaner. I'm gonna use a basic Windolean type product I use for cleaning windows. Take one piece of tissue rag. Squirt a bit on. And that will get rid of most of the dirt. There you go. Right, almost ready to go. The key to lighting the fire, other than lots of lovely paper and dry kindling is plenty of airflow. Now, depending on the model you have, you'll have various vents that you'll need to open. On my model, I have one here, and I have a secondary vent here. Once those are fully opened, and you see here where these vents are open, then that'll allow plenty of air in to start combustion. At that point, Take yourself some matches. Now we use nice long matches that are used normally to light a barbecue. The reason for that is, is you can get the match right into the paper to light the fire. Now play the match around the paper at the front. Again a good long match will last a long time so light as many pieces of paper as you can and then throw it in there and close the door. At this moment we have plenty of airflow through all of these vents. Now after about a minute it will be much like this. Give it a bit longer. Um, each stove behaves differently but the idea is once the stove is adequately burning and at temperature you can start to close down the vents. The reason for that is you don't want too much air in there otherwise all your fuel will burn very very quickly. At this moment, I want it to get nice and hot. I want to see a good flame. I want to see almost a blast furnace-like effect to make sure everything's pretty hot. Now that's getting pretty hot already. What I can do pretty quickly with my stove, at least, is to start to pull out a few logs and throw them in there. Some of the smaller logs are a little bigger than kindling anyway. I'm quite used to this fire by now, so I know that after about three to four minutes, it's probably okay for me to close the primary vent down. But keep watching it, okay? As your stove gets older, you might find the 
fit of the parts is a bit looser and it lets more air in. The result of that is, is that over the years your stove will burn more and more fuel. So it is worth having it maintained and particularly the sealing strip around the door. It's been about six minutes now and I'll close the secondary vent. Now it's going to be quite hot by this stage, so do use one of the implements supplied to the stove and close it down. Okay, the fire's been burning for seven minutes now. As you can see, it's pretty much stable and self-sustaining. I don't need to do anything more to this other than keep it fueled. Okay. Now the basket you see here will last us typically two or three hours, a typical evening burn. If you want to burn it during the day, when the central heating is off, then you might need a couple of baskets like this. This is a three kilowatt stove, just under three kilowatts, so the equivalent of an old electric three bar fire. Okay, It does, after a few hours, really effectively heat up a full half of Super Home 59. It's a large five bedroom house. So we have an open stairwell that's over there to my left and all the heat goes up there and heats the bedrooms up there as well. So it's actually quite nice in that respect. The downside is, is that the thermostat for central heating is on the wall up there. So once this area downstairs becomes pretty hot, it shuts down the central heating. That can lead to the upstairs bedrooms in the far end of the house being quite cold. Now this is one of the things they probably don't tell you about when you buy a stove, is that it's all well and nice, it looks very pretty, but in fact it might end up to your home feeling very warm in some places and very cold in other places. You can't really avoid that unless you have a very clever central heating system that has some kind of zoning. We do have thermostatic radiator valves that will in theory help moderate the temperature between the rooms, but unfortunately if the central room thermostat closes down the hot water pump, then your central heating system come, go, switches off and you haven't got any hot water in the radiators. So some bedrooms upstairs will feel pretty cold. One of the advantages is that um, this is quite closely fitted into a brick surround. And this area here, as we've seen from thermal imaging, will actually retain the heat of the fire for almost 24 hours. The, the brick itself stores energy. And what we find is, if losing this in the evening, even long after the fire has gone out, that the house maintains a good even temperature, much higher than the temperature outside with the central heating off. Downsides again, it will be a bit dirty, you have to clean up, and if you're used to having instant on-off heating, and a like a gas fire, then you might find some of the um, chores of managing the log supply and the kindling and screwing up his paper might be to your disadvantage. The major advantage we like about the fire is that it's visually very attractive. It makes the room look really warm and inviting. And when we have guests around, they always congregate around the fire and comment on how lovely it is. So we do encourage people who can have a log burning stove fitted into their home to have one fitted. But do be prepared to realize it's not a panacea. It's not completely a sort of zero carbon solution to heating your home, but it's a good reserve source of heat. We can also cook on top of this, not particularly well, you can't control the heat, but that top layer there will get hot enough. You can heat milk, you can heat a soup um, on top of there quite easily. So if for any reason you don't have any electricity supply to your home, this is a good emergency source of heat for you and builds your family resilience. So that's everything you need to know about a log burning stove in Super Home 59. We do encourage you, if you can, to get one for yourself. One more thing to say, do remember to get your chimney swept at least once a year by a qualified chimney sweep. I'm Mark Brown, this has been a Super Home 59 video all about log burning stoves. Our log burning stove is great, recommend you have one too. Um, and you can see more of our videos online on YouTube. Until then, we'll see you next time, and you too can conquer your home. Bye-bye.